Hello, Maverick Traders. Welcome out to your market roundup for May 3rd, 2022. Corey here with you. As always, just a quick reminder to make sure that you follow your trading plan. So let's get into the markets a bit. Um, kind of an interesting week as we move into the Fed meeting later on. And this Fed meeting is important. This is going to be the first time we've hiked rates in quite a very, very long time to the tune of 50 basis points. Now, 50 basis points is not a standard rate hike. A lot of that should be priced into the markets. The markets have been adjusting, preparing for this moment. So, you know, will we get a reaction? Well, it could be a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, naturally, you would think that the Fed hiking rates and talking hawkish should be really bad for stocks and good for the U.S. dollar. It's at least possible that most, the, the, the vast majority of that has been priced in because remember, stocks, assets are forward discounting mechanisms. So the market's trying to price in the future, right? Not what's out there today, but what's coming six months from now and so on. That's what they're pricing right now off of is, so they've already had that insight that the Fed's going to raise rates. They're not going to wait until the Fed announces it to price that in. They're going to say, okay, if interest rates are going up, we got to put this in our models. What does that say for valuations? Oh, stocks are too high. If rates are going here, we sell some stocks, we get them repriced until we find that equilibrium. So it's already been happening in the markets. Notice today, advancers versus decliners, 60 to 30. Uh, still in a bearish market trend, quite clearly, four out of every five stocks roughly is trending lower. A little bit of a choppy sideways day. There's not too much to add that way. Oil down, gold up a little bit. Oil down was interesting because energy equities were up, and it's a little bit misleading because, yes, oil was, was down for the day, but some of the other energy complex was actually zooming higher. Um, diesel prices were, were really sharply higher, for example, uh, to the upside at certain points. And so as you look at the markets, it's not always just, you know, one commodity. It could be that natural gas, it could be that other markets are doing other things. And so it's not always just about, you know, oil for energy related assets. If I was to look at it, like natural gas was up 4.5%, something like that roughly today. Well, oil was down but nat gas was skyrocketing. So, you know, which companies had exposure to nat gas? Well, they were better performers and so forth. So anyway, as you look at things in the energy space, sometimes certain pockets are better than others. And we'll get to the heat map here in a second, but you'll see a lot of green and energy, even with a down day for oil. There's a little bit better explanation as well. A lot of energy was actually up strongly today. So as we look at the S&P, what do I make of this chart? Now, we made a pretty good call here for a, a temporary bounce, and I called it a little, you know, head and, or pardon me, not head and shoulders, a little bit of an inverse cup and handle. And it priced out to 430. We got there in a hurry. We talked about that bounce. Um, I think we could even kind of come back and say, well, the same dynamics are probably in play here again, a retest, and it's a little bit bigger price pattern, but the same type of concept. Ultimately, do I think we leave this bounce to the downside? Yes, but are we going to get a bounce? And is this kind of an inverse cup and handle? I think it's all that type of price pattern. So I've traded the S&P pretty actively of late. You know, and even took off some profits here on the, the spike and even took off some profits here as we kind of flushed to the downside. And oddly enough, put on a, a little bit of what I would call a neutral trade, but a target that's a little bit higher in the markets for the rest of this week. Just feeling like we could bounce up to about 425 and then probably that, that would fade off, you know, so... Not a, a real aggressive trade there, but still expecting that we're kind of in the process of establishing some support. That's what we're doing. There will be this little consolidation. That's kind of the handle portion of the inverse cup and handle. The most important piece to that really, though, is that we'll likely leave on the downside. 
And that's where momentum and trend should really pick up the pace. Um, if this market is going to bounce, you've got to watch the NASDAQ here for a, a break through here. Now, tomorrow's the Fed day. Tomorrow is going to be choppy and there's going to be some violence to it. There will be a lot of energy and a lot of reactions. And oftentimes on Fed meetings, they're knee-jerk reactions that you can fade. Like I would almost anticipate if we sell off hard, we come rallying back. Or if we rally too hard, we'll probably come fading off. Sometimes it's the second or third move that's the, the better move and the one that has follow through. So after the initial numbers come out, the Fed hikes by 50 basis points. The statement is pretty hawkish. I'm expecting them to be quite hawkish in their tone. Look, they got to battle inflation. We already know that. Uh, there will be probably a, a kind of a drop and then maybe a little bit of a pop back, a little bit of a rebound, but we shall see. As you look at today, uh, financials more in the green, but energy, I mean, it's just bright green. And again, oil was down, but but nat gas was up strongly, diesel, some of the other complex in energy have been acting rather strong. Other than that, I look at this and it's kind of a mixed bag. You've got some red, you've got some green. Uh, Travel-related stocks down, the Marriott's, Hilton, Booking, Expedia was down sharply today. Uh, it's in that same space as well. Our weekly and monthly outlook, you know, we're in a little bit of the bouncy, consolidating type of, of trade here, but I think this is kind of the important aspect. Look at the trend of the moving averages. Look at the downward slope. Look at the bearish crossovers. We've been consolidating for most of the last couple of months here, and then we broke to the downside. And that break lower right there is important. Now, you don't go in straight lines in price action, right? You have this big selling pressure, and then you'll get a recovery. And everyone says, oh, it, everything's fine. It's off to the races. And then no, they get hit with another big uh, selling, you know, dynamic, and we go to new lows, and we break these next lines of support and so on. It, But it's more of a process than, you know, going in a perfect straight line to that destination. The destination seems like it's going to be lower prices, but how you get there will be some zigs and zags, of course. I think more down than up overall would be my expectation. Let's look at a few names here on the bullish neutral and bearish list. I did go neutral, it's worth noting, on some of these that I had had on the bearish list for quite some time, the Roblox and Roku and so on. And and actually, they're up over the last week. We talked about that last week. I just kind of am putting them in the neutral category because I'm not aggressively buying those stocks that are down 90%, but I'm also maybe not shorting them any longer. I'm going to try to find some new spots uh, to get bearish and and we'll look at some bulls as well. So last week we highlighted Delta in this little pullback and it was at 41 whatever last week. Well, now we're at 43, but I think the pattern's still in place and I still suspect that this goes up and out from here. So, uh, you know, we retested the resistance. This is the consolidation and kind of the handle portion. Why does Delta outperform? I don't know, but it looks like that should continue to be the case. Uh, Dollar Tree. This is a weird one. Uh, not necessarily what I would think I would want to buy, but the overall trend is up, and we just pulled back to retest that breakout zone. This, I think, would be a good candidate for some form of calendar, diagonal, something like that, because my guess in, in terms of how this is going to trade is it'll probably build some sort of triangle where we go back to 175 and then we drop back, but we set a higher low and then we go up to 175 and we fast forward a few weeks and this hasn't gone significantly higher, but has a little bit more of an upside bias. Occidental, I talked about this one last week as well. We had a, a pretty good size drop and now we're bouncing back and I think we're going to go up and out from here. There's kind of this key fundamental number around 59 because that's where Warren Buffett's uh, warrants are exercisable. And my 
best guess is, is that, you know, that's kind of why it's sticky around this level, but ultimately will go up and through there into the 70s and 80s and so forth over time. But I would really think, you know, you dip below that and we come back to 59. It might be a little sticky here. I'm not sure that the breakout is imminent, but ultimately I do think we leave uh, the way we came, which is to the upside. We've talked about Twitter neutral for the past few weeks, even while it was in all these discussions about a buyout and this and that, and it's been, you know, a great neutral trade. I have to say I would remove that thesis. I, I'm taking off, you know, the expectations for neutrality. I think at this point, the option values have actually collapsed. The volatility, implied volatility, the options have collapsed. That's what we were trading for. And now it actually runs the risk of something different. Maybe the deal falls apart and the stock gaps down sharply. You know, um, I don't think it, I think another tech name would probably already come out and bid. So I don't think there's a ton of upside, but there could be some really substantial downside uh, in Twitter if the deal was to fall apart. And I'd still probably say, you know, 50-50 that Elon Musk walks away from this. So it's been a good neutral trade. I mean, the options were really, really expensive and now they've kind of collapsed in value. That's what you're trading for on the neutral side. So I'd, I'd stick with, um, you know, taking your money, move on, and we won't have Twitter on the, the neutral side any longer. Um, Newmont Mining. I would have thought that gold could hang in a little better. Um, we talked about, you know, I, I kind of got lucky in where I took off some of my gold exposure and silver specifically. I took profits at a really good level and they've collapsed. And I didn't expect them, you know, they sh showed big signs of exhaustion, but I didn't expect this much deterioration. And I think long oil, long energy and short gold is the trade. This is a part of the commodity space that's just not acting well. I think there's more downside in these names would be my expectation. Uh, Sunrun, it was kind of interesting. I've had a thesis. We talked about First Solar last week about trading it on the bounce. And First Solar's right at the 50-day, right where we talked about. But this week, so you could short First Solar. Sunrun's in the same space. And if you price out this inverse cup and handle, this is exactly the area where it should fail up here against 24, which was the breakdown zone. There's what I would call patterns within a pattern that all point towards it probably going back towards, you know, 19-ish and then some. I really like Sunrun as a bearish trade if, you know, assuming that it rolls over right here against that 24 level. And then Win Resorts, same thing. Yeah, we're bouncing. But ultimately, I kind of think this is a bounce that fades. And so when you start bouncing off of these same levels of support, it's always possible that this becomes some big double bottom or something. But most of the time, it's not. And these bounces, both Sunrun and Win, have a nice little bearish pattern for another retest of the lows. And the third time should be the charm. So if we roll over right here, Head back to that support. That support should give way. It's like bending metal. The more times you bend it, the more likely it is to break. And I suspect that's where Win Resorts is heading. So don't be surprised tomorrow with a very hawkish Fed statement that they're going to battle. The, they want the markets to realize that they're going to be hiking rates. Is it fully priced in? I don't know. You know, maybe we get another day or two of selling to kind of put a little short-term uh, finishing touch here on it. But ultimately, I, I think the most important aspect of it is the market has to reprice a lot of things. and People are probably not fully expecting the Fed to be hawkish and raising by 50 basis points for multiple sessions. They still kind of fall back on the prior thesis, which was always the Fed is accommodative. And that's changed. We're in a different world now. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think the markets do leave these price pattern charts to the downside. So that is the big event this week. Earnings wise, 
AMD, I think they report today, but the rest of these, I believe, are the rest of the week. So Conoco and CVS, EOG, which is Energy, Moderna, Uber, plenty of companies that represent the markets. We kind of pass the majority of earnings. We do get into retail stocks here in the next week or two um, as kind of the final sector representing earnings. But, you know, it's for the most part, we've seen most of the sectors and industries represented. So not huge surprises to be anticipated. Hope you've enjoyed this market roundup. Have a great rest of your day and we will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.